Hello, it's me again. I'm back on my Eldritch where I tell you something crazy, you go crazy, and once everyone has thoroughly succumbed to the madness, I return to my slumber. I get a lot of comments and messages from people who tell me they love seeing my vids pop up because it makes their day, or it cheers them up, or it makes them laugh, and you know, all that good stuff. And seeing those messages also makes my day. I like knowing that I can bring a little bit of light into a very dark world to someone I've never even met. So naturally, I have compiled a list of some of the most horrible shit I've ever seen. So if you're a longtime viewer of this channel, or if you just clicked here because of the title, I can take a good guess that you probably like watching documentaries. My vids are kind of like little documentaries in a way, but I imagine you like to watch something bigger with more detail and more production from time to time. And with significantly less swearing. If you clicked here because you wanted to know how the f***ing alien made a YouTube account, I don't have an answer for you either, buddy. I love a good documentary, especially the ones that make me stay up all hours of the night wondering what the hell I just watched. Because once you learn something, you can't unlearn it. That is inescapable! So we're gonna take a look at some documentaries that I watched and went, oh man, this is never leaving me. I'm Vibby, and on this episode of A Space Alien Explains, documentaries that keep me up at night. A couple of things to keep in mind before I get into this. Number one, know what you're getting into. Please be aware that almost every trigger warning imaginable is going to come up at some point in this video. Warnings are displayed on the screen right now, so if you're sensitive to certain topics, get that mouse ready to click the f out of here. There's some f up in this one. Make sure you protect yourself and please be aware that no one is making you watch any of the documentaries I'm going to be talking about. Number two, don't take this video as a list of recommendations. There are a ton of documentaries that you can watch with friends and family and have a wonderful time. Nothing in this video fits into that category. Literally everything you're gonna see here is guaranteed to be a bad time and very likely to have some sort of effect on your psyche. Like, don't marathon all these docs in one night, you're going to get brain damage. Well, maybe not, but I'd rather you not risk it to find out. Alternatively, you can use this as a list of documentaries to avoid. If you know what's in it and you've decided that's something you don't want to see, you can say f that and block it when it comes around on your Netflix recommendations. It's good to be informed. Number three, this is a personal list. All this means is I am limited only to docs I've seen and have constructed my list based solely on that. If you know of a documentary that isn't on here that would absolutely knock my tits right off, please mention it in the comments. Might check it out when I'm feeling emotionally masochistic. Number four, this is not a top 10 list. Nothing in this list is in any particular order. I didn't make a ranking based off of what was the most disturbing or whatever. Frankly, all of these are terrible, just in different ways, and I can't make a top 10 ranking based on that. Looking at you, watch Mojo. And we'll begin this with some honorable mentions. So my honorable mentions list are either things that everyone and their mother has seen at this point, or they're things that freak other people out, but I wasn't particularly bothered by it myself. I thought that these were worth mentioning because what we find as disturbing is subjective and all that, and what didn't exactly get to me might have a different effect on someone else. And that someone else might be you. So first documentary in my honorable mentions is Blackfish, which I'm putting in everyone and their mother has seen this category. If you are one of the few who has never seen Blackfish, Blackfish is about killer whales in captivity and how their living conditions cause them to go literally insane and kill people. This documentary is pretty much the sole reason why SeaWorld decided to end their orca breeding programs, because the backlash when this documentary came out was massive. They lost something to the effect of like 15 million dollars as a result of this doc. They thought they could keep a whole f***ing whale that has killer right in its name, and thought no possible consequences could come from it. The warning was right in there on the can, my dudes. My second honorable mention is Beware the Slender Man, which I'm classifying as didn't freak me out personally. Beware the Slender Man is about an incident in Wisconsin where two preteen girls lured their friend into the woods and stabbed her multiple times in an attempt to sacrifice her to the Slender Man. You know, the f***ing Slender Man. Maybe this documentary would have been scarier to me when I was younger, but nowadays I just associate the Slender Man with smut fanfiction where he ship with Jeff the Killer. I can't imagine being sacrificed to the Slender Man of all things, I would be so insulted. 
So now to begin the actual list, we'll be starting off with... Zoo, directed by Robinson DeVore, 2007. Zoo is a discussion on bestiality centered around the story of the Enum Claw Horse case. If you've never heard of the Enum Claw Horse case, actually, you might have. Maybe in your earlier days on the internet, you were one of the extremely unlucky people to accidentally come across this, or maybe one of your friends who was an especially nihilistic decided to forward you this. I'm talking about a video called Two Guys, One Horse, otherwise colloquially known as Mr. Hands. And if you were one of the people to see that video, congratulations! You've witnessed the Enum Claw Horse case! So, for people who didn't have unrestricted internet access as children, the Enum Claw Horse case was an incident where a man bled to death due to complications from being illegally by a horse. The with a horse part was recorded and spread around the internet as a shock reaction video in a similar vein as Two Girls, One Cup. Zoo explores the life and death of Kenneth Pinion, aka Mr. Hands, and also discusses the reasons in general why certain people are attracted to animals, from the point of view of self-identified zoophiles. Zoophile meaning they have a sexual interest in animals. Cause if you're gonna make a doc about a guy who died from getting by a horse, you bet you want to find out what kind of decisions he made in his life that led to him getting by a horse. The twist is, his reasons for doing this might not have been a bestiality thing after all. And just to clarify, there is a difference between being a furry and being a zoophile. If you want to stick your d in a cartoon anthropomorphic rabbit, fine. But we're talking about people who want to stick their d's in actual rabbits. This is the territory we're in. So I mentioned Zoo first because by the end of this video, I want you to forget all about Zoo. If you choose to watch any documentary from this list, please, for the love of God, do not let it be Zoo. Despite the subject matter, Zoo is just a really boring documentary. I know that sounds wild. How can a documentary about horse be boring? But by God, they really did it. They made horse boring. They somehow managed to bore me about horse fu- Abducted in Plain Sight, directed by Spy Borgman, 2017. Abducted in Plain Sight is the story of probably the weirdest kidnapping I've ever heard. Like, if you've heard of a kidnapping weirder than this, please tell me. I would very much like to know. So there's this family, a typical American family in a typical suburban town, and they have a neighbor slash family friend. One day, the neighbor slash family friend comes over and invites one of the daughters to go on a camping trip. Alone. With him. But the family really trusts the guy, and they don't think that's weird, so they just let her go with him. He gets her in his car, and I think he drugs her or something to that effect, but while she's knocked out, he brings her to a location that's unfamiliar to her. And when she wakes up all confused and he plays a tape. The tape claims to be a message from aliens, and they're warning about some kind of calamity about to fall on Earth. And the only way to save humanity is if she conceives a child with their chosen male. The chosen male being the neighbor slash family friend who just kidnapped her. And it works. So your next question is probably something along the lines of, how the f does that happen? So basically, the neighbor manipulated the entire family through he gained the parents' trust that way. He either had with or intended to have with every single member of this family. Like Jesus Christ, he went up to the mom and he was like, hey, we should and she just goes, hell yeah, bro, and they had Then later, he and the dad were driving around together and he goes, hey buddy, I need some relief. Would you do me a solid and me off, but like in a bro kind of way, no homo, am I right? Actually, I don't remember if he them off. It might've just been a hand but either way, yes, they had So by the time he got to the daughter, everyone was just fine with it. Like, she was gone for a while. If I remember correctly, it was several days before anyone did anything. Crazy. I'm gonna get away from the weird things for a bit to talk about. Grizzly Man, directed by Werner Herzog, 2005. Grizzly Man is about the life and death of Timothy Treadwell, an environmentalist, documentary filmmaker, and founder of Grizzly People, a bear protection organization. Throughout the documentary, it becomes clear that Timothy was very enthusiastic about grizzly bears, to the point that some people believed he actually wanted to be a bear. Every summer for 13 years, Timothy would fly to a national park in Alaska and live in the wilderness with grizzly bears. And when I say he was living with the bears, I mean he was really getting up in their business. He claimed to be building actual relationships with these bears, like he was playing with the cubs and 
It's been theorized that the bears were so confused by his behavior, they actually just let him do it. Timothy stayed alive for as long as he did because the bears dead didn't know what to do with him. The park rangers, on the other hand, knew that what he was doing was extremely dangerous and did everything they could to keep him safe, but Timothy took their concerns as an offense. Timothy Treadwell would have been known as just some f***ing weirdo if it weren't for the fact that he was eaten by a bear. And when I say he was eaten by a bear, I don't mean that the bear bit his arm off and ran away with it. The park rangers found some random body parts lying around one day, and the rest of Timothy was inside of a bear's stomach. But hang on, it gets worse. During his final summer in Alaska, he brought his girlfriend with him. His girlfriend was absolutely f***ing terrified of bears. She got eaten too. But hang on, it still gets even worse. Have I mentioned that their deaths were recorded on tape? Remember when I said Treadwell was a documentary filmmaker? He brought his camera with him on many of his summer trips. And that camera ended up recording the audio of his and his girlfriend's deaths. Now before anyone mentions this, yes, you can search for the audio on YouTube, and there are several videos that claim to be the actual recording. Let me be the first to tell you that all of those videos are fake. The real audio was never released to the public as far as I know, and the person who owns the actual tape has no intentions of ever making it public. What you do hear in the YouTube videos are dramatizations or reenactments based on what little we do know is on the tape. And the only reason why we know anything that's on that tape is because of this documentary. Fantastic! The Bridge, directed by Eric Steele, 2006. Boy Interrupted, directed by Dana Perry, 2009. <laughs> Past here, sorry for the interruption. I'm only popping in so I can deliver post-production note from VB. She's doing everything she can to make sure this video stands a chance at remaining monetized, thus allowing it to continue being recommended to new viewers. She realized at some point during production that the content discussed in this section of the video may destroy any hopes of monetization or recommendation, which would make this video absolutely dead on arrival. She has opted to remove this section of the video for the public release. However, an extended version of this video is available on Patreon, and it includes this section that was removed in order to be safe for YouTube. If you want to watch VB's takes on the bridge and boy interrupted, go to patreon.com slash explains, and it will be available for you to watch on the $2 tier. A direct link to the extended video will be provided in the description as well. Please be aware that the content in the bridge and boy interrupted touch upon the topics of suicide and mental health. If you're sensitive to those topics, you're good to continue this video, but it may be best to avoid the extended version on Patreon. Thank you, and I will now return you to your irregularly scheduled content. Okay, enough of that. What's the next one? There's something wrong with Aunt Diane, directed by Liz Gargas, 2011. That doesn't make me feel any better. So this one kind of f***ed with me. There's something wrong with Aunt Diane is about the 2009 Taconic State Parkway crash, where eight people were killed by a drunk driver. It's absolutely a senseless tragedy on every level. Senseless in that all of these deaths easily could have been prevented, but it's also senseless in that the events that led to the crash make absolutely no f***ing sense. So the story goes, Diane Schuler pulled into a gas station and asked the clerk if they had any over-the-counter pain meds. You know, Tylenol, Aleve, Advil, something along those lines. When the clerk said they didn't have any, Diane apparently got back in her car, did like a metric ton of drugs, hit the gas, ended up on the highway going 80 miles an hour in the wrong direction with a car full of children, and she went on like this for miles before crashing into another vehicle. The kids in Diane's car were able to call their parents before the crash, which is what led to the title of this documentary. The thing that stuck out to me is how confused the remaining family members were by all of this. According to them, Diane was not an alcoholic, so why was the equivalent of 10 drinks found in her stomach? Did Diane have a seizure or a stroke? Was she trying to kill herself? If she was trying to kill herself, why would she bring all the kids with her? The documentary seems to suggest that the surviving family is in deep denial over the possibility that Diane was going through something that she was very good at keeping secret. But either way, it's all very strange. I'm sorry to end things on such a dour note, but this one's gonna have to stop here, otherwise you won't be seeing this video until December of next year. Yeah, I had to split this in two parts because the original draft was an hour long and ain't nobody got time for that. There will be a part two where I show you eight more documentaries, including some more honorable mentions. 
In fact, part two is already recorded, I just need to edit everything together. So drop a like on this video to give me motivation to finish that, and subscribe to the channel so you know when part two comes out. I also post videos and shorts on my Patreon a week early before they go public, so if you want to become an honorary alien, which grants you access to those early videos, uncensored videos, and the ability to vote on upcoming topics among other things, check out my page on patreon.com slash explains. Another cool thing about my Patreon is that I've switched my page to the new subscription-style payment schedule, so you can join at any time, any day of the month, and you won't get charged again on the first. Instead, you'll be charged the next month on the same day that you joined, like you would any other subscription service. So if this video happens to go out towards the end of the month, you can still join the Patreon and you won't get charged twice anymore. But if you prefer to give one-time support, there's a few ways to do that. You'll find a thanks button underneath this video. Choose any dollar amount you want and you'll get your comment highlighted. You can also buy me a coffee on Ko-Fi or commission me for art. You'll find my Ko-Fi page and art commission info in the video description. There's a very good chance this video might end up demonetized, so if you want to throw a couple of bucks my way, I will love you forever. Maybe. But you know, liking my videos, sharing my videos, commenting on my videos, and subscribing to the channel are also ways to support, so... I don't know, do whatever the f*** you want, I guess. I'd like to take this time to individually thank my honorary aliens from Patreon. Shoutouts to the patrons featured on this video's artwork, Airboy Steel on YouTube, Max Osiris Art on Twitter, and Pally Mar on Twitter. If you'd like to follow any of these folks or check out their content, links to their pages are in the description. Additional shoutouts to Abu Kitty Chris, Andrew Littleton, Bionic Link, Grayman, and Shinare, as well as all the other honorary aliens you'll see in the scroll at the end of this video. So please stick around until then to see all of their names. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Taya Ozaira for art and channel updates. Those links are in the video description as well. As always, thank you for watching, and here come the honorary aliens.